Nestor Marina, please. Oh, if, if there's anyone who has an empty seat next to you, could you raise your hand so some folks can sit down? Thank you. Good evening, board. My Good evening. name is Nestor Medina. I am here on behalf of Assemblymember Pichardo. I have a statement I would like to read on his behalf. Thank you. I support the Rent Justice Coalition's call for rent rollback for rent stabilized apartments because it's the right thing to do. Based on the Rent Guidelines Board's formula for determining rent increases, the coalition's suggestions make sense. Landlords in the Bronx brought in an average of $269 each month per rent stabilized unit they own. And while their operating costs have gone down from last year, those savings have not been passed along to tenants. All tenants deserve a chance to catch up to the rising cost of living. A rent reduction will bring fairness and give tenants room to breathe and a chance to get ahead. With less affordable housing options available in the city, we must do all we can to prevent homelessness. I will keep fighting for increased access to affordable housing and to ensure that my neighbors can afford to stay in their homes. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next three speakers are Brenda Dawson, Paulette New, and Carmen Vega Rivera. Good evening, Ms. Dawson. Hi, good evening. My name is Brenda Dawson. I'm on the community board for a member, and I'm also chairperson of municipal services. My complaint tonight is that all the leases are in English only. We're a melting pot. We are a diversified community, and we are finding out that tenants who are signing these leases don't understand what's being presented to them. And what I'm talking about is that preferential rent that came into play in 2003. I don't know whether there should be a rider attached to these leases fully explaining that because now it has become a issue within the Bronx community when all of a sudden out of nowhere your rent goes up $500. And this is because this is not being fully understood and all the leases are in English only. If you can make it so that there are other languages these leases can be written in so that people have a full understanding and some sort of pamphlet be attached to the leases to explain preferential rents, this would be more than appreciated because now it has become a big issue within our borough. And tenants can't sustain a $500 increase. If you rolled it back, it would mean nothing. Because with that type of increase, they're out of those apartments. And I really appreciate you listening to me this evening. Thank, Thank you, you for your much. suggestion. Okay, then. Paulette New. Good evening, Ms. New. Good evening. My name is Paulette New. Um, you need yeah. to um, bring the mic now? closer. Yeah. Hi, my name is Paulette New, and I'm, I'm a CASA member. And I just want to say that we are in a changing community. Can we get some okay. help with the mic, please? Yeah. Thank you. Maybe. Closer? Okay. I just want to be able to say that we, I just want to be able to Good. say that we are a changing community. Many of us is, is in danger of us, losing our homes. Our seniors are struggling, and the wage gap between the rich and the rest of us is growing. Now, we want to roll back, not because we just asking for a roll back. You, um, a lot of us is working, but there's no cost of living increases. Everything else is going up, and and the landlord they have been making their profit. We not we don't mind that the landlord makes a profit. We just don't want them to make a killing. That's all we want. And what it is is that, and what it is is this. What it is is this too is that they are getting funding. 
it's not like it was years ago where they had to pay someone to burn down their building to submit their insurance claims. So they are getting the money now. And we just want to make sure that we you take into consideration a rollback. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. New. Carmen Vega Rivera. Hi, good evening. My name good is evening. Car My name is Carmen Vega Rivera, and I am also with CASA. And I am a retired professional, as well as that I am disabled at the moment. Let me tell you a, bit, a little bit about my background, about my professional background, since I heard earlier from landlords that we are not supporting the middle class. I happen to have been in the upper middle class, and unfortunately, my life changed. So what does that mean? Right now, I reside at 888 Grand Concourse, not far from here, on 161st Street. I live in a building by one of the worst landlords listed on the public advocates list that is in foreclosure and owes over four, $14 million and has yet to pay the mortgage, has not provided heat and hot water, has not repaired the building, refuses to work with the tenants, and we, the tenants at 888, are not sure what's going to happen to us when the foreclosure goes through in a couple of weeks. How do we support a landlord such as Louis Barnbart Tiny Fiesta, and there are thousands here in the Southwest Bronx that have taken our money, stolen our money, have not given us the services and the repairs that are due to us, yet on top of it, we're going to get another rent increase. Let me tell you what that little rent freeze did for me this year. It was the difference between life and death. Let me repeat that. It made the difference between life and death. That small decrease that I received was able to get me the medication that I need to survive daily and monthly. Another increase would be detrimental to my health, detrimental to my welfare, and the possibility of me losing my apartment since my landlord has put me in the position that he has and has jeopardized a roof over my head. A rent rollback, which is substantiated with the data that in fact oil prices have gone down, is critical and imperative at this time. This is not a question if it should be done. This is a question of when and must it be done. And a rent wrap rollback is non-negotiable. I want to end by saying that housing is a human right, but so is a rent rollback is a human right. And on top of that is so is my life. So let's work together to make this possible and come to that rent roll for this year. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Michael Beckford, Grace Torres, and Anna Haywood. We're out of speakers. Is Charmaine going to come down with more? Or? Okay. Can she get down is the question. <laughs> uh, excuse me, can you hear me? I'm Michael Beckford. And... I'm a concerned citizen. Yeah, could you, um, Can you hear me now? speak right into the microphone? Please? Yeah, Good. excuse me, okay. <laughs> uh, my name is Michael Becker, but I'm concerned with the cost of living. Since the cost of living is going up and the pay wage is not, is not uh, up to par with it, I know you got responsibilities as far as taking care of your buildings. That's good. But the same token, income inequality is on the rise. And if people are going to be priced out of their homes where they can't pay their rent or they got a choice between paying, paying rent or buying food, that's a, that's, a, that's a hell of an issue to deal with. Um, more people are going to the family shelters, and that's not good, especially when they got families and they got kids concerned. It would be a domino effect to have the quality of life being diminished. You know, um, your profit is really skyrocketing, especially when the oil prices went down low. So you're definitely making a good cut. But in the same token, income inequality is not, is not, is, is, is not right. And I know you could keep these rents stabilized like such. If the state is regulating y'all to hamper us with, uh, with, with um, issues, then I think you need to take talk to uh, the governor or whoever you're going by to let them know that the people who's making you rich, you need to take care of us and move more better so we could live in harmony and it's more better to do that i think you need to talk to the state legislators 
and Congress and let them know we should not be put in a compromising situation between paying rent and eating food, especially when we got young kids. And it's not good. It's not healthy. And I'm quite sure if the tables were switched around, you'd be in the same predicament right now saying the same thing we're saying to you. Life is a, living, living in a nice environment is very nice. What we need to do is just get it right. Income and quality is, 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 not, is not too good, but you need to make it right for the people who take care of you. Thank you, Mr. Beckford. Grace Torres. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Casa Rawa. Good evening. My name is Grace Torres. I am the leader and a Casa member for over 10 years. I live at 111 East 167th Street. I am the president of the Tenants Association, and I represent 150 tenants. My landlord is Shera Associates, HW Management, Kelly Associates, and now known as Finkelstein and Timberger LLC. Take your pick. Also known as the MCI King of the Bronx. They own over 100 buildings and are currently the, um, how should I say, have been tagged in the worst landlord's list. Finally, they have catched up to them. I have lived here for 38 years in a one bedroom apartment with my two sons, one of which is disabled. I myself am on a fixed income and have health issues that have worsened throughout the years and yet have chosen to rise above them to give a voice to those that can't or fear retaliation. Tenants have suffered for years rent increases that have, I'm sorry, that have forced families into shelters and out of our city. I myself cannot afford any rent increase and neither can my neighbors. This board has never been fair to New York City tenants and is totally disconnected. Voting in favor of rent increases when this city was in a recession. As New York City tenants, RGB rent increases are not the only rent increases we face. We have been hit with multiple MCIs that have raised our rents to 80% of our incomes and continue to rise. Most of these MCIs were not MCIs. They were shoddy cosmetic repairs, but because of all the loopholes and the lack of oversight by HCR, New York City tenants are paying the price. Excuse me, Ms. Torres, your time is up. Could you wrap it up? Yes, I will. So we are here today to put a face and a voice to the tenants of the Bronx and ask that you send a clear and loud message by voting for a rent rollback. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Ms. Haywood. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, Sheila, Cecilia, Stephen, Kathleen, Helen, Samuel, and Scott, thank you for coming to the Bronx to listen to us. I am the, t um, tenants, uh, the president of the Tenants Association for 690 Gerard Avenue. I've lived there for 45 years. My children were born in the Bronx and still live in the Bronx. I am a professional with a good pension, but I see myself in about 10 more years as a homeless person. If the rents keep going up, I cannot afford it anymore. I started 45 years ago with $500. I am paying $2,000 now. Because I have a good pension, I, I cannot take food stamps. I, I'm not eligible for anything, any help. So please, I beg you, and I ask God to give you the strength to advocate for us. Thank you for coming to the Bronx. Thank you. The next three speakers will be Bienvenida Perez, Stevenson Nurse, and Bev Creighton. 
And um, Mr. Perez needs a Spanish interpreter. Mr. Perez. Bienvenida Perez. That's you. Step up to the podium. We have an interpreter. You don't? Okay, I'm sorry. It was Mark that you requested an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Good My evening. name is Bienvenida Paez, and I have lived in, in the Bronx almost all my life. And what I'm going through now is terrible. I just lost my mother, and I blame the landlord, yeah. and I blame the management of the landlord because I have to be in my house waiting for the landlord to come and fix the, and, and do repairs, and they didn't show up. They, the, the court is not doing anything. I've been two years in court with them. And if you see me here now with this, it's because of the landlord management. Because they make me go through all winter with no heat. no heat. And my daughter and I were freezing. We have to sleep with coats on. We have to sleep with hats. We have to live with gloves. We have to sleep in five pants and blouses and everything that we can. And I, the thing that hurts me the most is that I lost my mother because of them. And I have to comply, but they don't comply. They don't comply. I've been two years in court with them. And I am a professional. I helped this country for 34 years doing charity work. I got a lot of money and I gave it away for the poor and I am one of the poor people living in this country and I don't see the court doing anything for me and for my daughter because I've been two years there in court. Paper get lost uh, in uh, inspections. They do a very charity work, some of them, especially one called Mr. Davis who came one and told me when he came to my apartment, he said, the whole structure is compromised, he said, because I, I was without a, a, a radiator for four years in three places in the apartment, and one of the radiators exploded. And I was for two or almost three weeks with hot water running down. My bedroom fell down. The, the front of my bedroom fell down, and to this day, the the, the uh, landlord do not comply. I wish for a rollback, please. And I wish that I need more help. I live in 3534 Bronx Boulevard, and the landlord name is Martin Katz, BBLC. And I wish that you please, please listen to the struggle that we are having in here. It is too much already. It is too much. And again, I am a professional and I have to be going through all this. And again, the most thing that helped me is because my mother, the hospital has to kill her because I didn't went there. I didn't, couldn't be there with her. And she got killed. She got killed. And she could have been here with me today. Please listen to us. It's enough. Yeah. We are suffering too much already. Thank you. Mr. Nurse, Stevenson Nurse. Mr. Nurse. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good. 
Good evening. Better. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm here to uh, represent our, our rollback. I'm a member of CASA and also a member of NYCC, New York Communities for Change. I'm the chapter leader here in the Bronx. Now, they said eyewitnesses is always a perfect person to when a crime is, where crime is uh, concerned. I'm an eyewitness to landlords burning these buildings down in the Bronx, going back to the 70s, late 70s. Eyewitness means that I saw landlords as a youth growing up giving or paying people five gallon gans of, uh, gallons of gasoline and cans, red cans, to literally burnt buildings down. People I knew die in those buildings also. So if you need an eyewitness, I'm an eyewitness to a crime that landlords committed here in the Bronx. As a carpenter, I rebuilt 90% of these rehabs starting in the early 80s. As an eyewitness, I saw and I'm asking that you consider the rollback very, very diligently because you have people who saw what they did, who know what they did, knew that they got spanked on the hands by the state or government, and they did not go to jail. They're still here with us. The said Bombard, I'm a, also a tenant of his building. He's a slumlord. We all know that. So um, grant us, grant us that courtesy of studying this very deep and realizing that <clears throat> People have been abused. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Bev Creighton. Yes, I'm right here. Good evening. Good evening. I am a CASA member. CASA Power! And a CASA leader. I lived at 1240 Woody Crest for 44 years. Years, all right? My landlord is J. Rand, DKSR Holding. He is a slum lord, slum lord owner and a slum lord landlord. You understand? I have lived here with my mom since 1972. My mom passed in 2007. Since 2007, he's been harassing my mom and me for the rent and other elderly tenants. I am tired of this landlord who does nothing for us tenants. It is not right. I am on fixed income. He does nothing, nothing. Do you understand me? He does absolutely nothing. Nothing, and I'm not going to pay no increase to him. He does not deserve it. He is a slumlord owner and a slumlord landlord. He only wants money and does no repairs in the building, and I'm sick tired of it. He wants money for nothing, for nothing. And I want a roll back. I am, I am disabled since the age of, since I was quite this age. I am tired of this, I, I'm just sick and tired of this, and, and, and these landlords doing zip, doing money. They do not deserve it. He is a, he is greedy, a greedy owner and a greedy landlord. And he has the nerve to want an increase? Are you serious? Not on, no, no. If you, if you give him an increase, an increase, you are no worse than he is. No okay. worse than he is. I want a roll back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Terrence Handy. Terrence Handy is is Mr. Um, Terrence Handy here? Ah, oh, okay. Could could you come forward? Thank you.
Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Um, let me state that I'm with Casa. My name is Timothy Handy. I live in 1434 Ogden Avenue. I've only been there about six months. I just moved in. Um, I'm one that's been looking for an apartment for 18 years. So I've been in a shelter for 18 years. I got people that went to jail, came home, and got an apartment in less time than I did. This is ridiculous. But, but let me also state what ridiculous is the fixed income. Because a fixed income means that things are not going to be fixed for the people with those incomes. Now, I have to explain to everybody here, a fixed income means that it is fixed for the landlord to do everything that's being done. Also, along with that, it is also fixed throughout the courts that they're able to do it. So when they say things are fixed up, they're lying. Things are switched up. Now, I'm going to say what's wrong is that I have to, we, everybody here, no matter what language they speak, no matter what physical or mental condition they're in, we're all in the same predicament. And the predicament that we're in, none of you that we're speaking to is in. So where's the relationship at? How could you relate with us when you're not in the same significant situation? What kind of relation is that? The only thing that y'all can do, and y'all did a good job, was sympathizing with us. Because this is the only thing that y'all up there can do, is sympathize with us. And I'm not attacking you for that, because we need someone to sympathize with us. What we don't need is the position that has us here this evening. Nobody needs to be here for this. Us or you. Thank you. Thank you. The next three speakers are Michael Giardine. John Montu and Margalis Segura. Michael Giardine? Okay. Yeah, I was thinking at seven. Is that okay? Okay, will that be okay? After these three. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, my name is Mike Trudina. Good evening. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner. She couldn't make it here tonight. Um, no, you need to speak closer to the mic. <coughs> there we go. All right. I'm sorry, Dan. Uh, my name is Mike Giardina. I am here to speak on behalf of Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner. Uh, I will read the testimony that she, she will submit to the Rent Guidelines Board. Um, hello, Chair, Chairperson, Honorable Kathleen A. Roberts, and members of the New York City Rent Guidelines Board. I am Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner and I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you this evening in my district. There are more than 33,000 apartments on the rent regulation in my district, which is the equivalent of nearly three quarters of my constituents. As you can see, keeping housing affordable and rents low is a very important issue for us Bronxites. Rent regulation is the primary source of housing for low-income <laughs> families. In my district, the median household income is $26,000, making an area with one of the lowest median household incomes and one of the most burdened areas in all of New York. Last year, you made history by supporting an unprecedented decision to freeze rents for families in rent-stabilized apartments. Let's repeat what was done in 2015 and work toward offering more relief for New Yorkers. But we can do better, board members. 
A rent rollback can support working families, the real backbone of our community in the Bronx. You should not have to choose between putting food on the table and paying your monthly bills. Tonight I urge you to roll back rents for the rent stabilized units in my district. My community deserves a breather from wayward landlords, which seek to raise their rents, whether legally or illegally. On behalf of the more than 125,000 residents of the 77th Assembly District, which includes the communities of Morris Heights, Mount Eden, Highbridge, Claremont, and Concourse East, I ask that the Rent Guidelines Board hear their concerns when voting on June 27th and give them a rent rollback. As always, I look forward to working with the Rent Guidelines Board. Housing costs must remain affordable so that our families remain in our communities. They should not have to worry about being priced out of their home. Thank you. Thank you. John Montui. Good evening. My name is John Montute. I am a resident here of the Bronx. I am also a housing attorney with Bronx Legal <laughs> Services with the Tenants' Rights Campaign. I provide free legal services to, proudly to the residents here of the Bronx. Just last week, we had the uh, third annual housing conference here, and the Department of Homeless Services explained to us that there are 54,000 homeless families in this city most of them women with children. Before they get to that point, hopefully they can get to our office where me and my colleagues do our best to protect them and keep them in their homes. However, the rents are unaffordable and it limits our ability to provide real services to keep families in their homes. It limits our ability to put them on programs such as FEPS, the shelter payments don't make up enough of the rent, and what ends up happening is that we're losing valuable community members. Living here in the Bronx, working here in the Bronx, I really do respect and love my community, and I hope it stays the same for the foreseeable future. A rent increase will have an adverse effect on our community, and that's why I'm here asking and supporting my fellow members here in the Bronx that you guys make the right decision and help us out. Thank you. Margalis Segura? Is Margalis Segura here? No, okay. Uh, the next three speakers will be Louise Thompson, Maggie Silva, and Maria Toussaint. Louise Thompson? You here? No? Okay. Maggie Silva? Okay. Come on up. Buenas <laughs> noches. Good evening. Do you need an interpreter? Mi nombre es Maria Tuzen. Just a moment, please. She's Maria Toussaint, I think, yeah. Yeah. Buenas noches. Good evening. Mi nombre es Maria Toussaint. Yo vivo en el 2205 de Davidson Avenue. Pago una renta muy alta y vivo a diario preocupada porque soy una madre soltera y tengo dos hijos. Ellos estudian, por eso no trabajan. My office is home attenda. Okay, just um, could you pause for a moment so we can get the interpretation? Good evening. My name is Maria Silva. I Maria live at, I, Maria Tusen, pardon. Um, Louder, please. Mm -hmm. My name is Maria Tusen. Good evening. I am a resident at 2205 Davidson Avenue. I. I am worried daily for, because I'm a single mother of two. Uh, my children are not working because they're in school right now. And I pay really, really high rent. 
Can we have it quiet, please, so we can hear the speaker? Could you speak into the microphone, please? Yo no tengo trabajo fijo, sé el día que no trabajo. Entonces, estoy preocupada porque tengo una renta alta y no voy a hacer el dinero del mes para mi renta. Como está la economía demasiado cara y es una preocupación para mí. Okay, a, just a, a let the interpreter um, interpret what you just said, please. So I'm a home attendant for work. Um, I don't work full time. I don't have a fixed amount of time that I work. So I don't have a guarantee that I will have the income each month to even cover rent. Tengo siete años viviendo en ese edificio. De esos siete años, hace dos años el elevador no trabaja. I've been living in the building for seven years, and out of those seven years, ¿cuántos años no trabajo? Dos años. Uh, it's for two years the elevator has not worked. Could you speak closer to the microphone, please? Siempre dicen que lo van a reparar, pero nunca lo hacen. Cuando vengo del supermercado con lo que compro, tengo que estar estabilizada, con miedo, va y me caigo, porque si yo no trabajo, no como. Um, they always say they're going to fix the elevator, but they never do. When I come back with my shopping and my groceries, I have to climb up stairs with it and, you know, live with the fear of having, you know, falling with all the heavy weight and everything. And then if I can't work, I can't eat. No hay calefacción y ni agua caliente. A veces en la mañana, a las seis de la mañana, yo me voy a bañar para trabajar y tengo que ir a la estufa a calentar agua. I have no heat. We have no hot water. Uh, sometimes at 6 a.m. if I want to bathe, I have to go to the stove and heat up water in a pot. Es decir, mi casero no se preocupa por los inquilinos. Yo espero que el objetivo que estamos tratando hoy se logre. Which is to say that my landlord doesn't care for his tenants. Um, I hope that the goal that we're after today is something that we will achieve. Para tener una renta. Let's let her finish, please. Para tener una renta económica y vivir decentemente como seres humanos no merecemos. To have an affordable rent and to live with, with dignity as the human beings that we deserve to be. Eso es todo, gracias. That is all, thank you. Thank you. Is Maggie Silva here? Okay, I see her. Okay, great. Would she prefer to testify sitting down? Yes, she's going to sit down right here. Okay, fine. Buenas noches para todos. El Señor le bendiga grandemente. Just vamos a, a moment, please. We need to get the. Vamos a continuar adelante. I can speak uh, two or three languages, but I like to speak Spanish because I can see the lot of big community Spanish in this salon tonight. Me siento bien orgullosa de sentarme aquí en esta sillita para hablar que toda la comunidad hispana que está aquí esta noche puedan disfrutar de esta reunión que con tanto respeto y con tanto cariño se ha hecho. Y es muy bueno seguir adelante porque esta comunidad del Bron es bastante, bastante amplia y muy grande. Y hay mucha gente aquí respetable que de verdad están sufriendo muchas, muchas cosas y los caseros no tienen compasión para ellos. Los ignoran, eso está muy mal. De algún lado tiene que haber algo para que se pueda resolver esta situación. Y es and I like to say this also in English for the people who do not understand Spanish. That the community of the Bronx is really big. 
There are a lot of people living here, not only the Spanish one, but also people who are really coming and speak English, all kind, no? from different countries. And most of them, uh, sometimes, because they don't know the places, and they don't know what to do, how to fight with the landlords, you know, and live in misery, suffering, a lot of consequences, because the landlord has ignored the situations in the apartment for them. And that's not fair. That's very unrespectful, very unpolite. Besides, some people have a small income, and the income is really not enough for the people to pay the rent. So they have the road back, you know, in order to help the community to keep going and fighting and struggling so the family can have at least something to eat for dinner sometimes. A lot of children can suffer because it's then, you know. That's not nice. Let's face it, you know. I'm very proud, and I said it again, I'm proud and a member of the program CASA because I can see that in CASA has made an effort all the time to struggling for the poor people and the community of the Bronx. And they really, I like that. I like that. Okay, I'm sorry I have to interrupt you because your time is up. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back. Roll back, 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 We're going to take a 10-minute break. Do you want to have a... Can they sell them? Can you translate it? 